Hello and welcome to this Astranti Theory video. As you can see, today we're going to be looking at payoff tables and how you can use them to make decisions with consideration of your risk attitude. Now, payoff tables are part of the P1 syllabus and can come up in the operational level case study exam as well. So I'll leave you in the capable hands of Pete, who's our expert tutor on the subject. And payoff tables are another tool used for analyzing scenarios. This time where there are several different outcomes based on the choice that you, the decision maker, makes. And ultimately what they do is they illustrate the profit and loss that will occur in any given combination. So any given scenario and choice that you have made. So as before, we'll use an example to demonstrate this. And we're going to look at Susan and her bakery. Now, Susan makes cupcakes. They sell for $1 a piece and they cost her $0.5 or 50 cents each to produce. And all cupcakes are made in batches of 10 and unsold cupcakes are thrown away at the end of the day. So there is a real risk here that if she produces too many cupcakes, she'll have to throw them away. And of course, they are costing her 50 cents for each one she makes. And if she has to throw them away, she's not making that $1 from selling them. And also, the sales are very much dependent on the weather. So let's look at the probability of the weather. So if it rains very heavily, with a 15% chance of that happening, she'll only be able to sell 20. There's only a demand for 20 cupcakes. If it's only light rain, there's a 25% chance of that happening, she'll sell 30. If it's overcast, there's a 27% chance of that, she'll sell 40. And finally, there's a 33% chance of it being nice and sunny, in which case she will sell 50. So what Susan needs to do here is to look at the supply. Look at how many she should produce and the profit and loss that will occur depending on the number she chooses to produce. So let's bring up the daily supply here. So she can produce 20, 30, 40, or 50. Remember, they need to be produced in batches of 10. So if Susan was to produce 20 cupcakes, what would her profit be at each scenario, whether it's heavy rain, light rain, etc. Well, let's say that it rains very heavily. Now, if it rains very heavily, there is only demand for 20. Now, that's fortunate because Susan has only produced 20. So what kind of profit would she make if it rains heavily? So the selling price per cupcake is $1 and the cost to produce is $0.5. So she will make $20 in revenue and it will cost her $10 to make the 20 cakes, which means that Susan will have a profit of $10. And actually she's going to have a profit of $10 regardless of whether it's light rain, heavy rain, overcast or sunny, because once she has sold her 20 cupcakes, there's no more to sell. So it will just always be $10. If there's a demand for 50, it doesn't actually matter because she's only produced 20, so it makes no difference. She'll always have a profit of $10. But what if she produces 30 cupcakes and then it rains heavily? Now, if it rains heavily, she'll have to throw 10 cupcakes away because there's only demand for 20 cupcakes when it's raining heavily. So what will her profit be then? Well, she's still going to sell 20, so she's still going to generate $20 in revenue, but she's going to produce 30. So if we multiply 30 by $0.5, it comes to $15, and she has to throw 10 of them away. So 10 of them are not receiving that sales revenue. So now she'll only make a profit of $5 because she's made $20 in revenue, but she's had $15 in cost. Whereas if she produces 30 and then there's only light rain, she will sell all 30, which means she'll generate $30 in revenue and have her $15 in cost, 
giving her a profit of $15. And that will be the same whether it's overcast or sunny as well, because she will sell all the units she produces. And then we repeat the process again for the 40 cupcake supply scenario. This time, if it rains very heavily, she'll only actually break even because she will spend $20 producing those 40 cupcakes at $0.5 a piece, but she'll only generate $20 in revenue. Then if there's only light rain, she will still produce the 40 cupcakes. She'll still have $20 in cost, but she'll generate $30 in revenue, giving her $10 profit. And if she can sell all 40, she'll generate $20 in profit. And finally, for the 50 cupcakes option. Now, this will actually lead to a loss if it rains heavily because you'll only be able to sell 20 cupcakes and generate revenue of $20, but you will actually incur costs of $25 to produce all 50 cupcakes. And then if she produces 50 and it rains slightly, she'll make a profit of $5. If it's overcast, she'll make a profit of $15. But if she produces 50 and it's nice and sunny and she sells all 50, she'll generate her highest potential profit of $25. So we can see here that we basically illustrated the different levels of profit that will occur at different situations when different choices are made. So she can look at this and think, right, what's going to happen if it's overcast and I produce 30. Look at this table, right, $15 of profit. What if it is heavy rain and I've produced 40? How much profit will I make? Well, I'll make no profit, I'll break even. So she can use this to map out the various different profit levels in different situations when she's made different choices. But as before, we need to look at how the risk appetite will affect the decision that is made. And we're going to start by looking at the maxi min model. So making the maximum minimum profit, which is very popular amongst the risk averse. What will the risk averse individual do here? How many cupcakes will they bake? Well, let's write out our minimum profit at each level of supply. So the minimum amount of profit we will generate by baking 20 cupcakes is at $10. For 30 cupcakes, it's $5. For 40 cupcakes, it's $0. And for 50 cupcakes, it's a $5 loss. And we can see that the highest minimum profit is at 20 cupcakes. So a risk averse individual will bake 20 cupcakes because they are guaranteed 10 profit come rain or shine. What about the maxi max approach favored by the risk seeker? What do they look for? Well, they look for the highest possible result. They only concern themselves with the best possible outcome. It doesn't matter how small the chances of it occurring or how much loss they might make. They just focus on the maximum profit. So what is the maximum profit? Well, we can see the maximum profit occurs during the situation when we produce 50 cupcakes. So the risk seeker will bake 50 cupcakes. What about the highest expected value? Going right the way back to earlier in the video, we were looking at expected values, which is the weighted average. This is favored by the risk neutral. And to do this, we will need to calculate the expected value of each option. So for the 20 cupcake option, the expected value is $10 because it's $10 every single time. So the average will be $10. For the 30 cupcake option, we have to multiply the outcome at each level by the probability. So it'll be 0 0.15 multiplied by $5 plus $15 multiplied by 0 0.25 and so on. And that gives us an expected value of $13.50. And repeat the process for 40 cupcakes and 50 cupcakes. 
and we get $14.50 and $12.88 respectively. So when the risk neutral individual is using the highest expected value to make their decision, they will look at that $14.50 and say that 40 cupcakes has the highest expected value. Let's bake 40 cakes. And finally, we need to look at the minimax regret, which is also a model used by the risk neutral. And that's all about choosing the option with the lowest maximum regret. Regret being the loss that you feel by not selecting the best possible option. So let's calculate the maximum regret. Then we're going to start by looking at 50 cupcakes. So what's the highest regret that we face by baking 50 cupcakes? Well, this actually occurs when it rains heavily and there is a demand for 20 because when you've baked 50 and it rains, you make a loss of $5, whereas the highest possible profit you can make when there's a demand for 20 is $10. So the regret felt there is $15. Then for 40 cupcakes, the highest regret also occurs when there is a demand for 20 cupcakes, because if you bake 40, you generate $0, but the maximum profit was $10. And therefore, the maximum regret you feel by baking 40 cupcakes is $10. Then for 30 cupcakes, the worst regret occurs when it is nice and hot and sunny, where you generate $15 in revenue, whereas you could have generated $25 in revenue if you had produced 50. So the maximum regret for 30 cupcakes is $10. And finally, for 20 cupcakes, this occurs when it is sunny, you only generate $10 in profit, whereas you could have generated $25 in profit. So the maximum regret for 20 cupcakes is $15. So you can see the lowest maximum regret occurs at 30 and 40 cupcakes. So the risk neutral using the minimax regret model would bake 30 or 40 cupcakes. But by the time you factor that in with 40 cupcakes having the highest expected value, you would expect the risk neutral to balance the risk and the reward and bake 40 cupcakes. So this video was actually an extract from our full tuition video on uncertainty in analysis which also covers decision trees, standard deviations, and much more. So for full tuition videos like that one, as well as study texts, mock exams, practice questions, and full courses, as well as some freebies, head over to our website at astranti.com. We'd also really appreciate it if you gave this video a like and subscribed to our channel for other theory tips and much more. Until then, thank you very much for watching and all the best of luck with your studies.